The drive for health care reform is as strong now as it has been in 16 years. The Cato Institute held a conference on health care reform June 17, 2009, opening the conference, framing the debate over health care reform. Cato founder and president, Ed Crane. We have a, a, a really interesting uh, conference today, and it covers a wide spectrum of issues um, dealing on, on, under the rubric of uh, health care reform. Uh, so it should be an interesting uh, day. Um, not only is it a wide spectrum of, uh, of elements of health care reform, but it's also a wide spectrum of uh, philosophical uh, approaches to it. We have a real great diversity of views. In fact, we had a small dinner last night with some of the speakers and had some very stimulating uh, debates and discussions and all very civil, I thought. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that uh, today. Our dis disappointment is that the administration was invited to send representatives uh, to this conference, and they declined uh, to do so. It's interesting to note that when the White House uh, hosted their summit on health care reform, uh, they said they were going to bring people from across the political spectrum. In fact, uh, President Obama even said during his opening comments, in this effort, every voice has to be heard, every idea must be considered, and yet there were no free market approaches to health care reform at that uh, uh, seminar. Uh, this one, as I say, is, is different. Um, and um, uh, we do have a wide spectrum of views uh, in, the, uh, in terms of the speakers. We do not have a wide spectrum of views uh, at the podium right now. I am a libertarian, and uh, I have uh, strong views that it's um, inappropriate for the federal government to be involved in health care at all. Uh, but let me just briefly say four different things that concern me greatly about uh, the current debate. Uh, the first uh, deals with competition. The president um, insists that we need a, a public uh, insurance option to have competition in health care. There are 1,300 companies providing health care insurance in America. And uh, it's one of the most competitive industries in the country. The idea that a subsidized public option, which the Lewin Group, as many people in this room know, suggests will effectively destroy private insurance is ludicrous. Um, if you want to increase competition in health care, the best way to do it, in my view, is to get rid of the uh, constraints on buying uh, insurance from another state. Uh, if, you, if you had interstate competition, you would allow individuals uh, to uh, have insurance that reflects their insurance needs and, uh, and also enhance uh, freedom in the process. The second thing uh, is the whole uh, question of, uh, of decoupling health insurance from employment. We all know why that came about. Uh, during World War II, wage and price controls uh, led companies to compete for employees by offering fringe benefits, one of which was free health care. By the time the IRS, it dawned on them that that was, in fact, income and they wanted to tax it. It was so popular they couldn't do it. So we have this awkward and unnecessary and, in my view, inappropriate connection between employment and, uh, and health care insurance. Uh, that needs to be changed. and, uh, and preferably through the portability of uh, HSAs um, to uh, uh, increase the security of individuals in terms of controlling their own health care. Third, um, I'm very concerned about an article that appeared in the New York Times several weeks ago. And the headline was something due to the effect of Dr. Shortage uh, Undermines Obama Plan. And I have to tell you, when I see the word shortage, I know it's a non-market phenomenon. Everything is scarce. Scarcity exists. Shortages exist because the government gets involved. And right now, there's a shortage of uh, primary care doctors because their salaries are controlled to a large degree by the edicts of the federal government through Medicare. And uh, that is a problem. And there are other aspects of the doctor shortage that worry me. It's not just that they're not making enough money. Although I must say, a bright young person looking at a career who says, uh, you know, this is very hard work to become a doctor. And people don't become doctors just for money. But money and compensation and taking care of your family is a consideration. 
when you see the government is getting more and more in control of health care, it's a factor. And the other factor is the bureaucracy. How many of us know doctors who have said, uh, you know, the paperwork is ridiculous. I didn't sign up for this. Uh, so the bureaucratization of health care is a, is a concern in terms of uh, having enough doctors to provide quality health care. And finally, I'd say that uh, I'm concerned about uh, President Obama's confidence that he is going to reduce health care costs through his program despite all the massive increases in spending that he's proposing. I don't doubt that the president's sincere. I mean, I could because he did say during his campaign that there would be no net new spending under an Obama administration, and that seems not to have been the case. But uh, I think he is sincere about health care cutting spending. But to me, uh, it just reeks of rationing, and that would be the worst of all possible worlds. Ed Crane is the founder and president of the Cato Institute. You can learn more about Cato's efforts in the arena of reforming health care at our new website, healthcare.cato.org.